Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. This November 2nd, next Tuesday, of course it's election time, and there are four states that have marijuana issues on the ballot. Of course, the biggie is the California Prop 19, and uh, there are three other states, though, that have marijuana issues going, one being South Dakota. They're uh, voting to legalize medical marijuana, as is Arizona. Uh, both of those states have uh, initiatives that were that were set apart by the uh, people proactive in the marijuana movement. Now, Oregon, they've already got legal mar medical marijuana. They passed that in 1998. And uh, they are uh, voting on an issue this time to uh, allow the growers to provide the uh, to grow and provide the marijuana for the different dispensaries, and also to uh, be able to transport it from county to county and from dispensary to dispensary without any problems. So all four of those issues are on the ballot this Tuesday, and uh, the Freedom Files uh, radio program, along with uh, uh, Casper Leach and the guys from the Intel Hub, they're going to be doing the uh, coverage election night and Casper Leach will be uh, uh, going over all the totals on these particular issues. So I thought we'd devote this episode to kind of look at some of the finer points of the different uh, uh, things coming up. Uh, we'll start with the California, the Prop 19, since it is probably the, the biggest one of the four. Uh, and this one is actually going to uh, bring about legalization of marijuana outright. And but there are some limitations, and uh, this is what we need to really discuss here. But basically, the uh, Prop 19 is going to allow an individual to possess one ounce of cannabis without going to jail. If he gets caught by the cops and he's got a bag of weed in his pocket, he's not going to suffer any kind of jail time or anything like that. Uh, the uh, Proposition 19 also allows them to set up regulations to where the, uh, the different growers that supply the dispensaries are able to basically transport their products from county to county, from dispensary to dispensary, and not really suffer any repercussions from the law. Uh, the states have been given the power in this initiative, though, where they can change the amounts that are, are going to be capable of being grown and also the amounts that you can possess. So they've, they've kind of left it open at least through, time, through a time period to see what, what is actually going to take because we're really going to have to get into it to see what the market deems and what people are going to have to do. So if they put strict restringents on it now, uh, you pretty much are, that's all you're going to ever get out of it. So they left that part of it open, which is good. Uh, one thing about prohibition, and we learned that back from alcohol, uh, is that the states have to repeal their pro prohibition measures one by one. And in California, this is the first step in that regard to getting marijuana or cannabis legal in all 50 states. And uh, once the state measures in place, then they can go after the Fed, the federal government, and uh, hopefully get cannabis completely removed from any kind of scheduling at all. Uh, the Prop 19 also there's uh, the Prop 19 also allows an individual to use cannabis in his own private domain, not in public places, but in any of his own private domain, and also allows him to grow cannabis in a space of 25 square feet or less. Now, the this is. You know, 25 square feet of space doesn't grow very much cannabis. In fact, you could probably get two, maybe three plants there, and at the most, you're going to generate probably enough cannabis to last you about a month, if you're lucky. I mean, that's if everything grows well and 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 the plants perform. So it, there's sort of a shortfall in this Prop 19, and that's that's part of the thing I have issue with it. It's sort of like they have us on a leash, and they gave us about six more feet of leash to run around on. But it is a step in the right direction, and that's, this is what has to happen, I guess. We're going to have to do it in baby steps. Apparently, the federal government's too afraid to just come out and say, hey, you know what? We're just going to drop cannabis from the scheduling, and it's outright legal. Turn it over to the free market and see what happens. Uh, another problem that I see with the Prop 19 is the they're basing their tax revenues on this illegal market, this illegal pricing. And this certainly is not going to be the case once you start to legalize cannabis. The price that we're looking at now is 50 times higher than it should be. So their projections of tax revenues it, it, it are, are also 50 times greater than what they should be. So they really need to be looking at the fact that cannabis is going to be selling for around 5 or $10 an ounce. 
And if you if they went about this and just made it completely outright legal, where the, where there was no scheduling, no regulations or anything like that, you could grow as much as you want and all. Then you could open this up to free enterprise, and then they would make the money off the sales tax and the permits for the businesses that are going to set up to sell it. Now the counties and the state uh, agencies are allowed to to uh, set the guidelines for the hours that the stores are going to be open that sell the cannabis and also where these locations are. This is no different than what uh, they do with alcohol now. There are, there are zonings in, in every city that sell alcohol. There are certain sections of town that you can't sell alcohol and that's uh, all based on the zoning. This is pretty much going to follow, follow the same pattern and the county and state uh, regulators will be the ones that are in charge of that. Uh, I'm all for this Prop 19. I think it's a step in the right direction, even though it falls pretty short of what we really would like to see, and that's outright legalization. Uh, cannabis has never harmed anybody, certainly a thousandfold safer than anything that's legal like alcohol or cigarettes, and uh, so it should be turned over to the free enterprise. But my big thing about the uh, the whole business of this, they're, they're counting pennies when they start talking about the tax revenues from the, the smokable cannabis, but none of them have taken into discussion the hemp industry. And this is going to be a trillion dollar a year industry in this country. And you talk about sales tax revenues. I mean, the, the sales tax revenue that you're going to generate from the smokable marijuana is going to be squat compared to what the hemp industry and the products that that's going to generate bring about. Hopefully these people that are in charge of these initiatives and stuff will eventually wake up. And I'm thinking that maybe the state movement in this direction will open people's eyes to see, hey, wait a minute, where the real money is is in the hemp industry and the products that that's going to generate because the product, you're going to have dozens and dozens of products that you can set up in different stores to sell and all of those generating sales tax revenue. Whereas if you just base it on the smoking cannabis, you've only got one product, one dispensaries or many dispensaries, but only selling one product. So you can see that the hemp industry itself is the one where the gold mine is. In fact, I I predict that the uh, sales tax revenues from the hemp industry are going to be so excessive that uh, pretty much they cannot tax the uh, cannabis, particularly those that uh, that want to grow it for themselves. And you should be able to grow as much as you want in your private property. Anything you have, you could cover every square inch of it if you want to. And that's really what outright legalization will bring us. Uh, this is just sort of a, an attempt to, I think, to appease people, to appease the government and whatnot. So they're kind of starting out with baby steps to get in that direction. It is a step in the right direction, but it's awful weak. Now, Arizona, their Proposition 206, this is to uh, legalize medical marijuana, as is South Dakota's uh, Issue 13, initial thir initiative 13. The uh, <clears throat> these are both for legalizing medical marijuana in the state. My problem with medical marijuana is that, first of all, they're turning this over to the medical industry, and uh, doctors have never given a hoot about herbal medicines or herbal remedies. And I think it's just a crying shame that uh, people who use these herbs and have been using them for a long time will have to go through a doctor first to get a a permit or a prescription, if you will, for, for cannabis. I think this is absolutely absurd. It also narcotizes the cannabis herb itself. It's an herb. It's a safe herb. It, it deserves no scheduling. It shouldn't be on the Controlled Substance Act in any shape or form. And so, you know, the medical marijuana to me is just sort of a, I guess maybe the initial step to get to something like the Prop 19. And hopefully the Prop 19 is just sort of an initial step to, to, to get actual legalization coming about. Now, Oregon's uh, initiative, they've already had medical marijuana. It came about in 1998. And uh, this is pretty much going to give the growers the ability to grow the medical marijuana for all the dis different dispensaries and transport it from various counties back and forth. This has been a big problem right now. Uh, a lot of people haven't, they don't have space to grow their own cannabis. They've had a tough time being able to get, get it because growers are worried about the repercussions from the law. So <clears throat> this organ movement is basically for the growers. It's, uh, it's a way of being able to supply the dispensaries without there being any legal ramifications to the grower themselves. And also, uh, the, they've, they've changed the numbers on the number of plants that you're allowed and, and, the, and the different uh, areas that you can grow in. 
and I believe that's really where Prop 19 is headed. Is they're going to start out with this 25 square feet, which it's not going to produce very much cannabis, probably not even enough for a normal user to, to go one month. So we've got 11 months of uh, you know, where we're going to get the cannabis for that. And, and when you look at the fact that it takes at least three months to produce a crop under grow lights or six months outdoors, then you're not going to have much of a chance to grow you know, the amount of cannabis you'd need for a full year. So there's, there are a few flaws in that, but it is a step in the right direction. We do support it because it's more than what, what we have now. But uh, it's like, like I said before, they've just sort of lengthened the leash a little bit, and they're going to give us a little bit more freedom. But the only way this is really going to work across the board is outright legalization. Turn it over to the Free Market Society. Get the law out of it. Take it off the Controlled Substance Act. Get the federal government completely out of it. Get the Drug Enforcement Agency completely out of it. Even though this will bring about the demise of the Drug Enforcement Agency, since about 80 or 90 percent of their work involves chasing cannabis and regulating it, once the cannabis is legal, we can pretty much do away with the Drug Enforcement Agency. And I'm hoping that once that happens, it's sort of a, a ripple effect and we get rid of Homeland Security, Patriot Act, and some of these other unjust laws that have come about since 9-11. And, and all of these go against our Constitution. But the one underlying fact that nobody seems to be you know, bringing to the record here is that it's an individual's right to choose which herb they want to use. And you know, for, for the people who smoke cannabis and have been for a long time, even while it's been illegal, they've known about the medicinal and spiritual and social values of this plant. And to, to go to a doctor to get a prescription for that, it's almost like a slap in the face. And to, to say, hey, we've got 25 square feet to grow our cannabis in, that's pretty much a slap in the face too. But we'll take it. It's a start. And hopefully these things will lead into bigger and better things and the only way, though, that this is going to work is when we have complete outright legalization across the board in all 50 states. Everybody, we're all the United States of America, so we should all be able to, to live under the same set of rules. It's going to be unfair to you know, people like myself that live in Texas and other places like that to know that California, the people out there aren't going to be getting arrested for marijuana or cannabis. And yet my friends or anybody that I know in the state of Texas, they will still fall under this uh, reign of the thumb of the law enforcement. And this is just wrong. We're all Americans. This is a plant. This is an herb. It's a gift from God. It grows in all parts of the world and it's very safe. It has never hurt anybody. It never been one recorded overdose ever in the in, since the dawn of time there's never been one hospital emergency visit ever recorded from cannabis overdose it just doesn't happen the brain only has certain receptor sites for this for this plan and the compounds that you get when you smoke it so this prevents you from getting addicted to it it prevents you from getting uh in trouble with it, it prevents you from from overdosing and we know enough about this. We've had, you know, 40, 50 million people smoking cannabis since the early 60s in this country. And I believe that's a proving ground many times over of any research field that could have been done privately or done in a laboratory or anything like that. So I, I am, in one sense of the word, I am supporting these measures, but they fall quite short from what the cannabis users should be allowed to do, and that is outright legalization. Grow whatever the amount you deem necessary for yourself, it's just like your garden. You don't limit yourself on the amount of vegetables you grow just because we have some agency saying, oh, you can only grow three tomato plants or four potato vines, you know? This just is, this is ridiculous, and the cannabis is the same way. So I'm sort of on the fence with this. I'm, I'm going to support these because it's better than what we had, but they're very weak, they fall very short, and I think we could have done a lot better but at least it's a step in the right direction and I hope that all of you will support these measures regardless of the fact that they do fall short but it does it does sort of let the tight grip of the reins up a little bit but uh, all we can hope for is that we can convince these people with these measures that cannabis is safe like we've known for since the dawn of time and hopefully these uh, outright legalization will be the end result of all these and I appreciate you joining in this time 